So this is the first part of the model I'm building. It's a hovercraft. It's based on the SRN1 hovercraft, one of the original hovercrafts. And firstly I've made this duct. It's made out of foam, then reinforced with fiberglass, fiberglass uh, cloth. And I've just made an inlet bell here, which I'm going to stick to the top. I haven't actually taken the middle out of this bell, and I'm going to do that after it's all stuck together to keep everything nice and true because this stuff is quite flexible when it's thin. So I'm now going to glue that together. I'm actually going to use fiberglass resin and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to reinforce the outside and then not through the uh, centre. So I managed to stick the bell to the duct. That was done with resin and I let that dry overnight. And uh, this morning I've um, reinforced all this section with um, two or three layers of tissue. Uh, the cloth I've got doesn't like to uh, go over three dimensions so it won't conform very nicely to the uh, curves of the uh, bell. So I've done that with tissue and uh, there's at least two layers if not three in some places and that's been nicely rolled so you've got a nice little uh, duct there and then I've knocked through the centre and just cleaned that up with uh, sandpaper by hand. So the next stage is to mount the motor which is here, that's a dual motor counter rotating Right, so I'm continuing with the hovercraft. Um, this video is a bit disjointed. Uh, that's because I kind of drop in and out of this project as I've got other things on the go. So the last video I was about to mount the motors and I have actually done that. There are two motors, one on top of each other. Uh, obviously they are counter-rotating. Uh, I've mounted those using angle strip. I lost it, where is it? Here it is. So don't ask me what size it is, basically it was a greenhouse shelf. Um, I'm one of these people that kind of sees something and goes that might be useful and 10 years later it was useful. So that's how that's mounted and you can see I've used these two bits of wood either side just to uh, fasten it. Nicely located in the centre as best as I can. Um, if you don't know what this hovercraft looks like it's based on an early model, the SRN1, I've put a picture here. Um, so the air gets blown down into a hull. So the next problem that I have is, uh, I've had problems in the past where you blow air down into the hull and if it hits basically a flat surface at the bottom of the hull, then it kind of crashes the air. I don't know the correct term to use, but you lose quite a lot of the uh, pressure or the flow. So. To stop that, I've got this curved bit here that I've turned up on the lathe. So the air is going to blow down on that and then it's going to curve it nicely all the way around that form. Um, but then the air is going to be spinning around this as well. So to stop it spinning, you really want vanes. So I've cut this bit of plywood and that's got these slots in which these vanes go in. So there's going to be 12 of those around there and that will hopefully straighten out the air. Um, these veins were made out of fiberglass, um, not really hard to do. Uh, all I did was get a piece of drain pipe, waxed, cleaned and waxed the drain pipe and then used some fiberglass to mould over the drain pipe. Nothing fancy. And then I've obviously cut them all to size. So once that's done, I've then got the top deck. Uh, and I'm going to kind of build this model upside down. I'm going to start with the top deck and then go down. So this is the top deck. I cut four sections. They're all the same. Uh, I cut them all out at once and these gaps in the middle are going to be filled with balsa wood to try and make the model a little lighter because it's getting a bit heavy. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do the top deck and then put these veins, this. I've worked out this bit is going to have to be removable otherwise I'm not going to gain access to the bottom propeller. So I'm now going to do the deck and then I'll get back to you. So if it seems like I'm making this up as I go along, that's because I am. So, top deck, I've put all the four pieces together and all these areas there have been filled in with balsa wood. Um, and just to finish it off, I'm not sure you'll be able to see any difference, but that top surface is covered in fiberglass tissue. So that should give it a bit of waterproofing. So the next stage, putting that upside down, is we're going to build the bottom of the hull. So I've said before that this assembly here, which straightens the air coming from the fan, 
don't know whether to be able to move this right forward to bits. Yeah, there you go. That's going to go in the middle. And then I need some kind of bulkheads, shall I call them? So I've made these. And these are going to go on each one of these corners, get them the right way around, that way around, like so. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And then I need to do basically the bottom. And the bottom I've decided to make in six sections. So I've got that one and that one. And they will go around like so. So I'll zoom in and just show you that and explain why some parts got holes in. So I'm hoping you can make out what I've done. I've added some more of these, I'm calling them bulkheads. And then these two bits are two of the, four, uh, two of the six bits that will make up the um, hull. Is that the right word? I don't know. Um, I haven't filled these bits in with balsa wood, but that's what they look like when they are. And you'll notice that three of these items Three of these sections have holes in them, and that's for an experiment. Um, I want to see if the air blowing out of these holes will lift the hovercraft up. Um, I am intending to use a skirt on this hovercraft, but I thought I'd give this a go, just an experiment at the start. If it doesn't work, I can always fill those holes in with balsa wood. So the next stage for me is to stick the six bits together. I've got all six bits cut out and then uh, fill these with balsa and cut the remaining bulkheads. So as you can see I have finished gluing all these sections together and all the bits of balsa and the uh, cutouts and the next stage I want to do is uh, just to um, glue this in position. Now, I've already explained about this bit having to be removable. This part where the veins go is going to be glued and this bit, the hex gun, with this cone, will be removable from the bottom. So I'm going to glue that in now. Um, this is going to start to come together very quickly. I've cut out all of these, 24 of them, so they'll be able to go in tomorrow once everything's glued. And um, I can then sheet around the edges, which is what I intend to do. That you want to see the world, but what do you mean? The one in your head or the one they sell on TV screens? You say that you want to change, but you seem perfect to me. But I'm not surprised when the world is run off low self esteem. And for a while, I've wondered, have you wanted for a while? Why the voices in your head just keep getting more volatile? And why the days are getting faster And why we're looking at the ground like we're trying to find the answer Okay, so this is looking good And it's looking good for several reasons One, this is coming along very nicely And number two, after six months off the kids have finally gone back to school Thanks to uh, the coronavirus So just to show you what this is going to look like before I start sheeting in around the edges This is all glued to the bottom only now you get an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, true picture, there you go. That is what it's going to look like. So the next part is to stick one by one these all the way around. These are made out of balsa. So I'm going to do that now. Not particularly interesting, so I'll probably just do a uh, speeded up video for it. A bit in the middle, again, that should be removable. I've actually stuck that down to the hexagon. Break free, no, don't you worry. I think we're all best in 
at the seams and for a while I've wondered how you wondered for a while Why the voices in your head just keep getting more volatile And why the days are getting faster And why we're looking at the ground like we're gonna find the answer When it's never even been there at all Okay, so they're all stuck on. I'm just going to leave that for a few hours to uh, allow the glue to dry. But every section needed pins, and the glue does uh, kind of tack very quickly. I'll just leave that now. So we have done well. We are very near to getting this thing going. All the side pieces are done on the hull, so the hull is complete. And on this side, not that you can tell, I've glued all the central bit around where the veins are. And what I've done, or what I've tried to do, is keep this top deck available to be removed. So around the edges, I didn't glue it, so all of this will come up. And hopefully, all I have to do is undo these six screws here, and this whole top deck will come out. So the next bit is to get this mounted or wired up. So you might be able to see that I have these little brackets on here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Also wired one motor up. So you can see this little bit of wood. I've stuck the uh, outer perimeter of the duct and then there's a little bit of aluminium angle which I'm going to screw down. And it's the same on the other side. So the next issue I've have is I've wired up one motor that's the wires there um, but at the moment I've got both wires coming out the both motors coming out the same side so I've just zoomed in there a bit so you can see one motor the wires come out this side and the other wires at the moment are also the same side so I think I'm going to swap the wires around and have these wires coming out the other side I have realized that as soon as I put um, or solder these onto the speed controller, that will be it. I can no longer take the uh, motors out of the duct. You say that you want to see the world, but what do you mean? The one in your head or the one they sell on TV screens? You say that you want to change, but you seem perfect to me. But I'm not surprised when the world is run off low self esteem and for Okay, so I may have uh, jumped a few stages here. Apologies for that. I'll try and catch you up. So, wired both the motors up and checked the direction. Both of them were incorrect, so I've corrected the rotation, got them both running. I thought it was too good an opportunity not to give it a quick try. So you can see the blue tape is what I've used to tape up the slots where the air is meant to come out to fill the skirt. I tried it like that, but no way was it going to bother. So I've then blocked up the two holes which are going to be used for the ducts on the top, uh, which go forward and backwards. Um, and then, with the motors running at full pelt, I started to get a hover. And then, the pressure was so great in the hull, and the stop deck started to lift off, so you can see the black bits of tape, I've had to tape that down as well. Um, so I'll show you what it does, and I'll have to narrate this, because it is noisy. Uh, excuse me for getting my glasses. These are running 100%. So 
hope you can see that it is just about hovering but you can't see any distance underneath it so this is going to need a skirt because as it is at the moment there's no air coming up to direct it forward and backwards why the voices in your head just keep getting more volatile so now it's time why the days are getting faster why we're looking at the ground like we're gonna find the answer it's never easy to be there right so Okay, so I'm going to call that an end to this first section of the video. Um, obviously the model's complete, as you can see, um, but the footage, or the video footage, um, was nearly an hour long, with about 50 gigabytes of uh, data. So uh, I decided to cut the video into five sections. So that's the whole complete. Thank you for watching. Uh, the next part will be the skirt design and uh, construction, which is me basically on a sewing machine. So if you're interested in this, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.